is Mystery Meats Fine Dining Podcast, helping foodies discover new restaurants and new friends. Here's your host, the founder of Mystery Meat, Seth Ressler. Hello, and welcome to Mystery Meats Fine Dining Podcast. This is the podcast for foodies who love to travel. Uh, here's what we do. We find a local food blogger, a local food expert, and we talk to them about their city, get their restaurant recommendation, everything you need to know. And today, we're going to Memphis. Very, very excited. We're going to talk to Tiffany Langston of TiffanyTaste.com. She also does PR, so she knows everything you need to know about Memphis. She does PR for the tourism industry down there. So we're going to talk to her, and we're going to talk to her about Memphis, and we're going to get her restaurant recommendation, and then we're going to play out of the frying pan. Before we do that, I want to make sure everybody knows what Mystery Meat is. This is a social dining group that we started in the city of Boston, uh, and now it's spreading to other cities around the country, starting with San Francisco, and we can bring it to your city if you want. It's a bunch of foodies who get together to try a new restaurant, but there's a catch. They don't find out where they're going until 24 hours in advance. So what we're talking about here is adventurous foodies. You got to really, this isn't for everybody. This is not for the faint of heart. But if you're an adventurous foodie, you like trying new things, you like meeting new people who are also adventurous foodies, this is definitely for you. Go to the Mystery Meat website, mysterymeat.org. Click the big orange button that says get an invitation and sign up. And when we see a bunch of people from your city who want to come to a Mystery Meat dinner, we'll start one there. All right, let's talk to Tiffany. Tiffany Langston, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm excited to have you. We have not had anybody from Memphis yet, and you sound like you're the perfect person because you've not only got a great blog, TiffanyTaste.com. Oh, thank you. But you're also in the tourism and travel industry for Memphis. That's correct. One of the things that I do is I try to get travel writers, food writers to come to Memphis and write about my great city in hopes that the people in their cities will come visit us. Nice. And I want to talk about the culinary scene in Memphis, but before we do, tell me why you started blogging. Well, I actually started blogging because my husband promised me that he would cook more if he had better access to my recipes. So he said, if you put them online, I can find them, and then I can surprise you and cook for you and have dinner ready when you get home. And so it started off to be just a place to kind of record recipes and and food ideas. And then I, I went to college in Miami, and my friends from Miami would always call me and ask me, for restaurant recommendations, even though I hadn't lived in the city for years. And I thought, well, maybe other people might be interested in, you know, my thoughts about it, particular restaurants. And, you know, I asked people for ideas on how to cook quinoa because I couldn't do it properly. It's, so it's just, it's become sort of a catch-all for everything that I think about, you know, food, restaurants, recipes, ideas, just, just a, a gathering place for all of my culinary thoughts. But let's get to the bottom line. Does your husband actually cook for you more now? No. <laughs> <laughs> But I did start my blog, and that's why you're talking to me today, so it's win-win. All right, all right. So there's, there has been some, some positive outcomes for it. That's great. Let's talk about Memphis. What is the city of Memphis known for when it comes to food? The city of Memphis has a reputation for being the barbecue capital of the world, and it's true. A lot of the, the restaurants that get sort of the most publicity are our barbecue restaurants, and we have some that are world famous, including The Rendezvous, which is a very popular spot in downtown Memphis, as well as Central Barbecue and The Barbecue Shop. They've been on the Food Network. People talk about how great the barbecue is, and and we have people who will come to the city just to eat barbecue. How is Memphis barbecue different from, say, Texas barbecue or, or other types of southern barbecue? There are a couple of things. One is the the meat, right? Texas barbecue is generally beef based. So they'll have beef rib. They serve a lot of brisket, beef brisket. Whereas Memphis specifically concentrates on pork. I mean, you can find brisket here. You can find some beef ribs here, but most people here tend to enjoy pork based barbecue a lot better. So you'll find a lot of pulled pork and the pork spare ribs as opposed to the, the larger beef ribs. Um, also is the sauce. And that makes it differ from, say, Kansas City, which is a little bit more vinegary, or the Carolina mustard-based sauce. Our sauce is very tomato-based. It's usually a little bit on the sweeter side with a bit of a kick. So there are a lot of, there are a lot of nuances uh, when it comes to barbecue, and people tend to have how they like their barbecue. And if you like Texas barbecue, Memphis may or may not be the place for you because it's so different. Now, I know you're going to tell me that Memphis is a lot more than just barbecue, though. It is absolutely a lot more than barbecue, and it's it's one of those things that's kind of come about in just maybe the past decade or so. We've had a lot of great young chefs who've come to Memphis, 
maybe it's based on location because we're near the river. We're a short drive from New Orleans. We're a short drive from Chicago. But it's a place that hadn't really been known for being a culinary, you know, a culinary star yet. So outside of barbecue, though, we have a lot of chefs who are taking elements of different ethnicities of food, like elements of French food, elements of Italian food, elements of Asian food, and they're creating a new kind of Southern classic food that I don't think you can find anywhere else. Oh, that's very cool. Now, because you're in the travel industry, do you find people coming to Memphis specifically for the food? I mean, people who are planning their vacations and their trips around where to eat? Oh, I would like to see a lot more people. I find that the people who come here for the food are really here to enjoy barbecue or maybe like a Southern soul food. Um, But I would really love for Memphis to be in the conversation with other cities like Chicago, like San Francisco, like New York City. Like it's a great place to visit maybe for like a long weekend, but but still eat really, really well. So uh, talk to me about that. If I want to go beyond just barbecue in Memphis, uh, what are some of the dining districts that maybe I should explore and some of the restaurants that I should check out? It really just kind of depends on what you're looking for. One of our sort of major uh, dining districts is Midtown Memphis. And it's really great because you have a lot of restaurants that are within walking distance, specifically the Cooper-Young intersection. It's the intersection of actually Cooper and Young Street. And what's really great is that within a two-minute walk, you'll probably hit a dozen different restaurants. There's a Mexican restaurant. There's a sushi restaurant. There's an Italian restaurant. There's a low country, southern food restaurant. Pretty much any kind of food that you want, if you stop at that intersection, you can find whatever you're looking for. Another uh, street that's really cool is Summer Avenue. What's really great about that is that's kind of where the sort of smaller mom and pop, more authentic places are, like the authentic 10-seat Mexican restaurant with like really traditional, real Mexican food. The Filipino market that has like a food counter where you can find really authentic Filipino food. It's, but it's, it's off the beaten path. Like if you didn't know it was there, it, it's more of where the locals go, right? You don't see many tourists that kind of head out in that direction because they just don't know that it's down there. Right. Oh, very cool. And then are there chefs that are getting some notoriety in the city of Memphis? Yeah, we've actually, in the past three years, we've had two different chefs or two different restaurants that have been nominated for James Beard Award semifinalists. And and that's the first time that we've had that in probably about a decade we've gone without having national notoriety. And also both of the chefs of these restaurants were on the Food and Wine's Best New Chefs list as well. All right. So who are they and where are they? The first one is Kelly English, and he has a restaurant, Restaurant Iris, in the town. He was a Food & Wine Best New Chef in 2009 and was a James Beard semifinalist in 2010. And the other one is Andrew Michael's Italian Kitchen, and that's actually two chefs, Andrew and Michael, Andy Tyser and Michael Hudman, and they were Food & Wine Best New Chefs in 2010 and 2012 James Beard semifinalist. You're good that you know that all off the top of your head. You must do this for a living. (laughs) I I do. I talk about food a lot. So that's why I'm so excited (laughs) to be here because this is my job. I'm impressed. So talk to me about, you know, is there a particular time of year that's best to come to Memphis? Um, Memphis is one of those cities that gets very, very hot and muggy in the summertime, like the dead of summer, like July and August. So we always tell people that they should come either in the spring, April, or Memphis in May is really huge. So May is a big month for us. Or late September, October, when the leaves are starting to change, uh, the view of the river is really beautiful then as well, and the weather is a lot more friendly. (laughs) How cold does it get in the winter? It's not bad. Um, I say we probably average mid-40s in the wintertime. Okay. We get very little snow. We didn't get any last year, um, and it doesn't get super cold. Gotcha. Talk to me about some of the big food events. Are there festivals or other things that we should check out when we come? Oh, absolutely. Um, Actually, we just got finished Labor Day weekend with an event that this was its first year, but we're hoping that it becomes an annual event. It's part of the Kishon 555 food competition tour. And what we hosted was the Kishon Heritage Barbecue. And it was really great because we had fine dining chefs from across the country, as well as some right here in Memphis who came together and they did fine dining barbecue. They did barbecue, but with a fine dining twist. The really great thing about this tour is it also promotes using the entire animal, so like nose to tail cooking, as well as using sustainable farming practices and using heritage pork as opposed to not heritage pork because it's bigger, it's more flavorful, and they're raised in a way that is more sustainably responsible. Also, we have the World Championship Barbecue Cooking Competition, which is part of the Memphis in May celebration. And I used to work at the Memphis Zoo, so I love the zoo. And their big fundraiser culinary event is called Zoo Rendezvous. 
And that's really just a great fundraiser for the zoo, but it also brings 100 of the city's restaurants and 20 bars and distributors and people show off their best stuff. Cool. Well, and we'll post links to all of those up on the uh, Mystery Meat website so people can go check them out. I asked you for a restaurant recommendation. Uh, Tell me where we're going. We're going to Andrew Michael Italian Kitchen in East Memphis. So, uh, you know, and I didn't know this till I looked it up. Uh, Andrew Michael, it's not one of those, not a guy that sounds like he has two first names. That's actually two first names. It is actually two first names. The two chefs are Andrew Tyser and Michael Hudman. And they were born and raised in Memphis. And when they were very young, decided that they were going to open a restaurant together. So they went to culinary school together. Then after that, they went to Italy together to tour and to learn. They apprenticed together. And then they came back home and they opened up this really delicious, great Italian restaurant. They, they both have Italian roots. Their grandmothers are both Italian. So they, they have large Italian families. They have Italian grandmothers and they have these Italian roots. And they always knew that they wanted to open up an Italian restaurant based on some of the recipes that they got from their family. Oh, very cool. So, you know, I walk into the restaurant. What's the vibe? What does it feel like in there? It's a converted house, so it's very warm. It's one of those places where you, the food is really delicious and speaks for itself, but it's not super stuffy. It's not super pretentious. There's, like, really quiet music playing. Um, people are sitting around clinking their wine glasses, having a good time. It doesn't seat a, a very many people. I would say probably 30 or so. So it's, it's small, but they have a great patio as well, a little courtyard, and they also grow herbs and stuff out there and utilize some of their own herbs and vegetables that they grow on the property. Oh, so this is a place that you can do some outdoor dining then? You can. So I sit down, I look at the menu, I need an appetizer, where do I start? Oh my gosh, okay, so my favorite appetizer, and it's their take on like bacon and eggs and grits. And what it is, is uh, they do like a creamy polenta, they do a poached egg on top, they do barbecued pork belly and pork rind. Oh, that sounds good. I mean, this sounds Italian, but it sounds like it's got a definite southern streak to it. Exactly, exactly. And then that's kind of what's interesting about it is, you know, they're definitely Italian and they definitely use Italian techniques and things like that. But anybody who's from the South will like, oh, there's bacon and eggs and grits. Like, I, you know, I see that. Right, right. But it, it's just elevated. All right, cool. Any other appetizers we should check out? I always like their antipasti platter and it, the meats change depending on kind of what they have. But the best part about it to me is the pickled vegetables and they pickle their vegetables and, and fruits too in-house. You will get you know, in summer you'll get pickled watermelon, you get pickled fennel, pickled celery, but my favorite is the pickled golden raisins. I know it sounds weird. Really? But with like with cheese, oh, so good. That, uh, that sounds interesting. I definitely want to check that out. Uh, what about the main dish? Where are we going from there? Well, their menu is split up into two different sections. They have the pasta section and then they have the entree section. The pasta section, you can get a small portion or an entree-sized portion. And what's really cool about their menu is that it's very seasonal. They utilize things that are, you know, that are growing. So they always have mama's ravioli and they make all their pasta in house and then a meat gravy based on, you know, their grandmother's recipe, which is always delicious. As far as entree, they always have a pork dish, a beef dish, a squab or duck dish, and then the, the accoutrements, the side items, are just always based on, on what's available. Like in the summertime, they might have a sweet corn puree and a summer squash ratatouille. In the wintertime, they'll have you know butternut squash risotto and you know utilizing fall and winter vegetables. So I always generally get the pork because it's always delicious. You know that when you eat there, you are getting produce from local growers and meats from local farms. They do their best to really exemplify the farm-to-table concept. Oh, very cool. And what are we drinking with dinner? You know, we actually have a local beer. It's called Ghost River. And most all of the, the, the big restaurants will serve it because it's delicious. I mean, Memphis has the best water. As far as the wine, they tend to steer more towards Italian wineries, but they do have you know, some California, some Oregon, and that kind of thing as well. My favorite beverage, I have a couple of them as far as mixed drinks. They have specialty cocktails. I really like the uh, Blood Orange Tiz, which is lemon cello and blood orange soda. Ooh. And the Old Memphis, which is Buffalo Trace with pomegranate and orange. Oh, All very delicious. And, the, and their actual cocktail menu will also rotate as well. Gotcha. Uh, you know, this is a great place for cocktails then. 
Absolutely. And, and they have a really nice bar area. So even if you just wanted to come in and, and grab a drink at the bar and maybe split a antipasti or, or a cheese plate, it's a really great place to maybe just start your evening. All right. And what about ending the evening? What about dessert? The last time that I was there and the guy said, do you want the dessert? And I said, no, I got this. I want the chocolate and peanut butter tort with the popcorn gelato. And I know popcorn gelato sounds strange, but it's absolutely amazing. I would just take a big quart of that home with me if I could. Tell me about that. What is the popcorn gelato? That sounds interesting. You ever have a popcorn jelly belly jelly bean? Yeah. It's like what that jelly bean wished it could be. Really? Because that's one of the best flavors. <laughs> I know, right? It's, gosh, I'm not certain how they make it, but it literally tastes like you just scooped up a big cold bite of delicious, creamy popcorn jelly bean. All right, now I'm coming to Memphis just for that. Please come on down. I'd love to have you. <laughs> All right, and what are we dropping on this meal here? What's uh, the price range that we're talking about? Two people can definitely get out of there for $75, 100 bucks. Okay, cool. All right, you want to play a game? Absolutely. <laughs> you sound a little nervous. I am a little nervous. All right, here's how this works. I am going to ask you for a recommendation. You're going to tell me the first thing that pops into your head. All right? All right. All right. And we're not we're not judging you because you do this for a living or anything. No pressure. No pressure. We talked about Memphis barbecue, so I got to ask if uh, I'm coming to Memphis and I'm there to try one barbecue joint, what's your favorite? I knew this was coming. I would pick, don't hate me, mom. I would pick the barbecue shop um, in Midtown on Madison. I just think that everything they do is really, really good. You know, typically people will come and say, I want to have good ribs or I want to have good brisket. And I would take them maybe a different place. But if I don't know what you want. I'm taking you to the barbecue shop because everything they do is uniformly great. And you said, don't hate me, Mom. Where where would Mom take us? <laughs> Mom's a rib girl. She's from St. Louis. And she would probably take you to Blue City on Beale Street. Did you guys get into fights in your family over barbecue? No. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, enough barbecue for everybody. My barbecue is better than your barbecue. All right. What is the best appetizer you've eaten recently? Oh, wow. There is a restaurant in the Peabody called Chez Philippe, and they have a roast squab with huckleberries. And that was the first time I'd ever had huckleberries. And it's just, it's sweet, it's savory, it's super delicious. And it's, it's just enough to kind of whet your appetite for the rest of the meal. Ooh, that sounds good. All right, where's your favorite place to go for brunch in Memphis? I really like the Majestic Grill downtown on Main Street, right in front of the trolley tracks. And I like it because it used to be an old movie theater. So on the big screens, they show like old like Elvis movies. The atmosphere is really cool, and they make the best Bloody Marys in town. All right, cool. Uh, you get home from work. You're tired. You don't want to cook, but you don't want to go out either. What's the best place that delivers in Memphis? I really like the Trolley Stop Market. They have delicious pizza. They make the crust in-house, and they actually own a farm, so all of the vegetables and stuff are super fresh, and they bring them in from their farm every day. You mentioned uh, that Memphis has a lot of different types of cuisine. Uh, what about Indian? Is there a good place to get Indian food in Memphis? Oh, absolutely. There are a couple of different places. My favorite is Bombay House because it's the one that's closest to my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really quick drive. But what's really cool is they have a, a great lunch buffet, which allows you to try a bunch of different things. So if you're new to Indian cuisine, it's the option to kind of taste a little bit of everything and really figure out what it is that you might really like. Great. What is the best place to go for a first date in Memphis? I would pick 83 at the Madison Hotel. It's downtown. And the reason is it's a really kind of got a fun, funky vibe. The menu is small plate. So you, if you're the guy, you take your lady friend, your new lady <laughs> friend, and she can pick a couple of different things and it won't break your wallet. If you're the lady, this guy took you to this really cool kind of hit place. They have great drinks. And it's really centrally located to other places downtown, so it's easy to get to a club or easy to go dancing afterwards. All right, very cool. Uh, last question. What is the coolest name for a restaurant in Memphis? go with Hog and Hominy. And that's actually the newest restaurant by Andy and Michael. And it's Hog and Hominy, so it's pig and corn. And it's their sort of more casual pizza place. All right. Very cool. You did, you did incredibly well. Oh, thank you. That was great. You should do this for a living. You know that? <laughs> All right. Andrew Michael Italian Kitchen. You can find them online at andrewmichaelitaliankitchen.com. They're located at 712 West Brookhaven Circle in Memphis. Tiffany, if people want to find you online uh, or on social media, how can they do that? Okay. Well, they can visit my blog at tiffanytaste.com. They can also find me on Twitter at 
Tiff Langston. And if they want to find out about everything I do that doesn't involve food or everything else, they can visit my website at www.tiffanylangston.com. Cool. All right. And here it is. Make the final pitch. Why should foodies come to the city of Memphis? Foodies should come to the city of Memphis because it, if, even if you've been, if you were here last 10 years ago, it's a completely different city now. The food is so much better. It's more encompassing of different cultures. And any type of food that you're looking for, whether it be Ethiopian, Korean, Japanese, we've got it. We've got it here and we do it really, really well. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been great. This has been really exciting. Thank you so much for having me. This has been Mystery Meats Fine Dining Podcast. My name is Seth Ressler. A couple of notes. If you want a Mystery Meat dinner in your town, here's what you got to do. Go to mysterymeat.org. Click on the big orange button that says get an invitation and sign up. Uh, get your friends to do it as well because when we see enough people sign up, we'll throw a dinner there. Uh, and you can go meet a bunch of like-minded foodies. If you are a blogger and you want to be a guest on this podcast, recommend a restaurant and talk about why foodies should come to your city, just go to Mystery Meat and click on the Contact Us link. And if you like this podcast, do us a favor, head over to iTunes and uh, leave a recommendation and subscribe. That really helps us out. Uh, you can find links to everything that we mentioned at mysterymeet.org. And uh, thanks so much to Tiffany Langston for joining us. This has been Mystery Meat's Find Dining Podcast. You can find links to the websites mentioned in this episode at mysterymeet.org slash podcast. Thank you.